today is activation energy. So we have two more topics we need to cover for kinetics, and, uh, and we're done. Okay, so we are talking about rate of reaction, and so clearly activation energy must have something to do with how fast a reaction proceeds from reactant to product. Okay, so what is this thing, activation energy? <clears throat> So, chemical reactions speed up when the temperature is increased. Okay, temperature is the only thing that can change the rate constant, K. Okay. Um, so, as temperature increases, the rate constant, K, increases as well. It's not the only thing that can, okay? One of the things that can increase the rate constant, okay? All right, you guys, so um, why is it that they speed up when temperature is increased? Well, that's because reactions are based on collisions of molecules. And the collisions are more frequent when species have greater kinetic energy. Okay, so number one, they're moving around faster, so they're more likely to come in contact with each other more often because they're moving around faster. And not only that, is that they collide with a greater amount of force when they do collide. Okay, so there's two things working in favor of increasing temperature. You're going to have more frequent collisions. And the collisions that you have um, are, are going to have more force associated with them, more energy associated with them. Okay, um, yet, chemists find that the rate of reaction is actually much smaller than the calculated collision frequency. So, what, what they did, what chemists have done, is that, okay, they increase temperature, increase temperature, increase temperature, right, and that should go in a linear fashion. So, as you increase temperature, the rate is going to increase, and as you increase temperature more, the rate's going to increase even more, but it doesn't do that, okay, it, it, the, the two are not directly proportional completely to each other. Yeah, it does go up, but not as far up as they would imagine the rate to go as you increase temperature. Okay, so there must be something else involved in reactants colliding, besides just the point of them colliding. Okay, so colliding is one thing, but there must be another variable in this equation or in this idea that isn't accounted for just from simply the force of the collisions and the number of collisions that occur. Okay, so um, Arrhenius in the 1880s proposed the existence of a threshold. And that energy is known as the activation energy. And it must be overcome to produce a chemical reaction. And every chemical reaction has its own unique activation.
going to product. So the progression of the reaction and the y-axis is energy. Okay, and our example here is um, this reaction of whatever this thing is. I haven't even got. But there's two of them: bromine nitrogen oxide. I don't know what it is, you guys. Going to two nitrogen monoxides plus bromine gas. Um, or I guess it's a room temperature, it's going to be bromine. Okay. Now, here are our reactants the two bromine nitroxides. Um, here. And this is the amount of energy associated with this compound. All right, now, this up here is this threshold energy that has to be reached in order for the two to react to form product. Okay, now we call the distance between the energy that we've started at, so the, the amount of energy associated with just this compound reactants. And the top of this, where we get these things I'll talk about in a moment, okay, we call this the activation energy. And then products are down here. Okay. Now, here at the top, we have our collided species. Two BR nodes. Okay, now the deal with the collision is that not only do they have to collide, but they have to collide in exactly the correct orientation that will facilitate bonds breaking and new bonds being formed. So it's not only collision, but it's the orientation of the collision that's very important as well. So this, we say right up here that if you are at the activation energy, that means that you've got an activated complex. In that those two species have collided in just the correct way, just the correct orientation to create this thing called the activated complex because they are in the right orientation. Bonds can break, new bonds can form. We also say that at, when the activated complex is formed, we call this the transition state, and as soon as they collide and they're in the correct orientation, then bonds will break, new bonds will form, and right away, that product. Okay, now, um, the products end up with less energy than we start with here associated with reactants. So, uh, what would we say? Would we say that this is an endothermic or an exothermic? Okay, this is an exothermic reaction, meaning that our products are more stable than our reactants, right? When they form, products form, lots of stabilization occurs, and energy goes out. Okay, this amount of energy is released into the universe. If it was an endothermic reaction, where would this line be? up here, it would be above the reactant energy spot. Okay, so we'll talk more about an energy profile in class. Alright, so in terms of activation energy, the collision must involve enough energy to equal or exceed whatever the activation energy Orientation of the reactants must allow for me 
combination of any new bonds necessary to produce the products. So, reactants become products not by simply colliding, but the orientation of the collision is also very important, well, is essential. And so that's why increasing the temperature doesn't have a direct, directly proportional result of increasing the reaction rate. Because not only do you have to collide with sufficient energy, but the other piece is you also have to collide in the correct orientation. 